Welcome, Isolation Nation, to the Social Distancing Social Club. I'm Ben Gleeb. I'm very excited to be here. I'm one third of the quarantine team, and I'm about to introduce to all of you the other two thirds because one third of something, it's not great. It's like I'm one third of a man. Disappointing. I'm, <laughs> I'm one third of what my bank account used to be. You're in serious financial trouble. You're waiting for and checks. One third is not enough. You need your other two thirds to be a whole piece. That's enough for the math lesson today. I will turn it over to a man who's much better at math than me and much worse at hair than me. Please welcome. <laughs> I'll <everybody>. Appreciate that. Uh, I am one third of what I used to be. Um, a little, little worried that I'm that I'm Samson and all of my wit was in my hair. We'll find out. Uh, also, Ben, I want you to feel comfortable. So let me just change my background right there. Uh, so thank you, sir, for for joining us. Uh, as always, what a freeze on, frame uh, on my face there. By the way, I'm <laughs> I've said this forever. And there's actually a hashtag called. Leave freeze frames. I freeze frame worse than anybody on television. It is a fact. <laughs> Make it better. Uh, Thank you. So Thank you. <laughs> if, uh, if you guys want to uh, support the show, as always, uh, you can do that in a number of ways. You can, uh, you can Venmo us, uh, top right of the screen. You can also PayPal uh, at laughfromhome.com, as well as you can, uh, you know, you can uh, super chat us in the YouTube and, and whatnot. And my Zoom is being a little funky, so I'll introduce the front row uh, in a second. Uh, but for now, let me uh, kick it over to, to the other of the quarantine, Mr. Chris Bowers. Everybody, Chris Bowers. Hey, what's up, everybody? How are you doing? Are we excited? I'm fired up. we got a great show for you today. we got two great comics. We have Sarah Weinshank. Give it up for Sarah Weinshank. Woo! Woo! And we also have a Ryan Niemeller is here. Ryan Niemeller, yes. Woo! Ryan Niemeller. Thank you so much. Uh, Steve, do we have the front row figured out yet? Do you have the front row? Uh, we do not have the front row. My Zoom software is being a little asshole. So uh, we're. Uh, I'll, I'll if you want to, you want to take care of that I for me? That would be great. We've got we've got uh, Katie and Jordan are here, and Daniel's muted. Angie is here. Carrie C is here. Lena's here. Dick Tony is here. Chamber Pot Maid is here. That's fun. Richard Flores is here. We're gonna have a fun show. So thanks for being in the front row. If you want to be in the front row, go to Laugh from home.com you can buy your tickets there they're only 10 bucks you can come laugh in the front row with us the set laughter does help the show a lot so thank you for them uh ben what is the game for today you have the game for today thank you very much for asking me that christopher bowers i really appreciate that uh before i tell you today's game i'd like to share some of our favorites just a few of our favorites from the hashtag game on twitter from overnight as you know yesterday it was hashtag quarantine car and we got some Pretty darn good ones. We've got uh, Ford Must Stay Home by Rosvon Mindrew. We've got Toyota Corona, or is that too soon? We've got literally choosing Bob. the two that were already in the show yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Ben watches so got, the show. Steve, Steve, I don't think Ben watches the show. That's the I problem. don't. I'm not a fan. You know of what the face show. I'm making right now? Here's what face I'm making right now. <laughs> <laughs> also got a great bit planned for later where Chris Bowers becomes a hot dog. Yeah. <laughs> um, got a pretty funny one from Steve Hofstetter. Honda, I am no longer fit. I enjoyed that a lot. <laughs> Ben's CBC class. Also solid. Um, Thank you. We're going to introduce, and we're going to be playing a brand new game today at the end of the show for the uh, Twitter audience and for everybody to shift onto Twitter a brand new game today instead of repeating the same game so we're updating that stay tuned but today's game for the episode as you know if you'd like to enter please enter in the chat we'll read some of our favorites and if you would like to be eligible for the prize which is one copy of all 12 albums of our three hosts the quarantine box set and a free ticket to the front row of our video audience you can enter for a five dollar super chat or more if you can and we will read your answer and we will choose the best. All of our comics and celebrity guests will join us in choosing who wins. Today's one is, you'll see why it's themed in a minute. Our, our special guest used to be a police officer. So in honor of him, our game is best cop story. Your best <laughs> cop story. Join us in the chat. Tell us your best cop story. Keep it short. Pretend you're tweeting, okay? Keep it short. <laughs> and we only got 90 minute show. I know that sounds long, yeah. but. 
Oh, also, can I can I just interject real quick and say not only keep it short, but keep it uh keep it not police brutality and things like that. Make that's it, not make, what we're going for. Make this. it fun. We we want our your best cop story. That's a fun story to tell. That's one you tell your friends that makes them laugh. Wait, we can't that's tell police like brutality about. stories. What am I going to fucking talk about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's introduce our guest. Hey, there that's you go. Me. With that, we'll introduce our special guest. Uh, he was a state trooper in Indiana for years and years and years. He's an amazing stand-up comic who's doing three podcasts right now in the quarantine. He's got 1041 with Todd McComb, which is his true crime about the, uh, the murders and stuff like that. But he's got Fun Town, which is a fun podcast, and then Doc Heads, where they talk about documentaries. Uh, you can find all that stuff at toddcomedy.com. Give it up for Todd McComas, everybody. Todd McComas. Hey, give it up for me, guys. Thanks for having me, you guys. Yeah, also, Todd, on, I haven't Todd. seen you in a while. I miss you, man. And so just to make you feel comfortable, uh, I'm just going to change my background to nice. you go. uh, just to, just to make sure you feel at home. You know, I know you were a cop for a while. so I love it. You know what that photo's from? That's from, that's post search warrant. After a really good search warrant, <laughs> donuts and you smash <laughs> But I also want to make Bowers comfortable, so let me go back to this background. So, uh, uh, for that, I think you're going to need a neon sign that says "Hot Dogs, Hot Dogs, Hot Dogs." To be honest, with you. here I could do I could do this. This is, uh, this is the shirt. Yes. Which, by the way, you can get a T-shirt with that logo on it at LaughFromHome.com. So please check that out. Um, Todd, we. One time I missed a golden opportunity for the, it would have been the greatest postcard ever. I was driving by in Hollywood through the past this donut shop. It's on the corner of Hollywood and like Highland or something or Hollywood and La Brea. And there was, it's a corner shop. So that it said just donuts and a huge sign right on the street corner. And there was a cop motorcycle parked in front of the entrance, blocking the whole entrance and a cop walking out kind of heavy set with a dozen donuts in his hand and one in his mouth. <laughs> I tried to get a photo and I missed it before he got on the bike. <laughs> Who is this? Is this stereotype? Well, I tell you why. One time I, when I was a uniform trooper, I had to help this, this lady whose car broke down. And I was on my way back from the donut shop to the post with four dozen donuts for everybody. I was just sitting on the run. <laughs> put her in the back of my car. We had to move donuts out of the way for her to sit there. And she was like, <laughs> stereotype. And I was like, ah, we Incredible. Love that is awesome. <laughs> do you ever miss being a cop? How much do you miss the authority and your ability to swing that around? I, uh, I miss it a lot. Nobody listens to me anymore. When I tell them to stop doing <laughs> shit, they, just, they don't pay attention to me. Sorry to cut you off, Todd, but we're going to go to our next guest. Queen Rachel. <laughs> yeah, we'd like to say hi to Queen Rachel. Hi, Queen Rachel. How are you today? Hi, I'm well. Thanks. I'm not a tortilla. <laughs> you know, honestly, this is a better look for you. I think the, the rank of, of your looks is you as you, then you as a tortilla, and then Jarrett as you. <laughs> That's what I appreciate think. that absolutely uh by the way shout out to uh dave adler already kicking off the venmo throws in a dollar 80 and says what's up what's up dave we appreciate you being hello here. dave so please throw whatever you can to support this everybody on the show gets paid our guests our comedians and we raise money every episode for the friendly shoulder grant through the martin grant that steve set up in honor of his late father, and it raises money for comedians who are out of work, suffering from work loss due to COVID-19, which is much worse than the usual work loss most comedians suffer from on account of it's hard for us to make a living at all ever because our job is very <laughs> stupid. Yeah, but uh, speaking of the Friendly Shoulder Grant, huge shout out to Watch Gang. Uh, so Watch Gang this morning, a uh, hell of a morning because uh, they donated two grand to the Martin Foundation to fund wow. two different and his shoulder grants so nice. shout out to watch gang they're at watch gang on instagram if y'all want to send some love their way uh because what happened was they were donating a grand and i was so moved by it and i posted about it and then a bunch of people were like hey this is awesome and then they were like well here's another grand so i was like holy wow. shit so that was amazing that by the way this green screen does not work as well as i'd like it to <laughs> get a fancy green screen in the green. office you just got your green screen I just got my green better. screen, and uh, I think I need to iron it for it to work better. <laughs> <laughs> you have to probably light it like crazy. You got to light the hell out of green screen. 
Yeah. Well, go. look, so, all right. So, I, so, I could just bounce it off my head and it'll work. So that's a strong <laughs> idea. Can you at least put some hair on your head? Christ, I'm tired of looking at this. What are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you missed yesterday. You shaved it off. Thought it, was, it was frightening. It was Did you terrible. lose a bet? Is that what happened? Uh, yeah, my really? my bet was that this would have been over by the first week of April. And oh. so I lost that. Uh, and that, that was my plan. So I didn't rush to get a haircut when this was all happening because I was like, all right, it'll be a couple of weeks. My hair will be a little shaggy. It'll be fine. But realizing now that like it's been it, it was probably about six weeks since I gotten a haircut. I usually get them every three to four weeks. And now it's not going to happen for a while. And look, y'all might make fun of this now. This is going to be all of you, even Rachel. This is going to be all of you coming up soon. Hey, I just like got ahead of the curve, it. baby. It's not like Steve, I hate to say it. People anyway, so fuck it, you know? Yeah. All right. I hate to say it, Steve, but it's already kind of growing on me. I mean, more than it's growing on you. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, since Steve started the Martin Grant and we're raising money for Out of Work Comics, I'd like to, I'm also very honored to announce today that Chris Bowers is starting the Hugh Grant, where he will blow anybody for 80 bucks in a car. I thought that was going to be the end of the show. We announced that, Ben. That was our yeah. closer. Like, what? God damn it. That's Spoiler actually alert. why uh, we brought Todd in, uh, you know, as a former cop. That way he can advise you on how not to get caught. Exactly. So. How can you avoid also, getting busted should be in the price pack? prostitution <laughs> yeah. Todd how does so somebody avoid getting busted for prostitution what are your tips please when we get back into real life and we're not afraid to touch people so, how can you yeah, avoid that pitfall yeah if it's a female ask him to show your tits if it's a, if it's a dude proposition you ask him to show your dick they can't show those things to you if they show them to you <laughs> not a cop have at it spin away if, if they're if the <laughs> of it I'm to change my mind. I actually, I actually Damn. find this to be very, very useful advice. Um, I don't even do that just with prostitutes. Like if I'm at the, if I'm at the the grocery store or the bank, or just to make sure someone's not a cop, I just walk through life being like, "Show me your dick." And then, <laughs> I know. Yeah, it works, for, it, works for, it works for drug dealers too. If you have a coke dealer, they can show you his dick. They show you his dick. He's not a drug dealer. Thanks for the tip. Todd. That's very, very good. Tip. Thanks for the tip. Did you just say thanks for the tip? <laughs> also, why do you think we call Bowers the tripod and third leg of our quarantine? It's not by accident. <laughs> Not by accident, Todd. That's why. He, that that's exact... why he's the hot dog. Uh, can we <laughs> exactly can we go right. to a couple of Venmos real quick? Uh, Chris yeah, Lauren Rizal threw in twenty bucks with uh, with two laughing cats. Thank you very much, Amber Hagee or Hagee uh, threw in uh, five bucks. It says Howdy from Austin with a happy face. So very much appreciated. Thank you for the support as always. And Rachel, do we have anything coming in on YouTube? We do. Dave Adler um, also gave uh, one hundred and eighty stars on Facebook and says hi everyone. We've got Hello. Woody Gallagher, $5, a big shout out. And thank you to Illinois Gover Governor uh, Pritzker for finding PPE for my mental health center. We're combating this virus the best we can for our patients. Wow, Excellent. Nice. Good luck with that. And mm. thank you for doing that. Um, if you could just not uh, ask them to show them, show you their dicks. Their dicks. Uh, just for... <laughs> You're not a nurse. Yeah. That, works with any, yeah. that, that really works with any job. Any job where they'll show you their dick. Yeah. Except a comic. Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, I think I think we should be ready. For, let's do our first comic, and then we'll talk to Todd a bunch more after the first comic. Does that sound like a plan? Yeah, let's do it. Cool. Love it. So, so, Ben, can you introduce Sarah for us? Absolutely. I'm very excited about this, everybody. Um, this comedian is a very funny human being she's got a great podcast called shank she's got a great web series that we will talk about after her set um i believe it's called high science i could be messing that up i might be high right now but it's a weed themed web series where you do experiments while stoned and how great does that sound it's like mr wizard but far far better um <laughs> please give a warm social distancing social club welcome to sarah Weinshank. Hello. 
You are okay, stuck. You, you you went from being sideways to being muted and sideways. Can you hear me? Yes, a yeah, dream you're woman still sideways. But, but let's you're still do it sideways. sideways. This will be the first time we do that. That'll be fun. All right, okay. let's go. Or just um, turn your phone the other way. Either way. Is this, is this fine if I do no, it this way? No, fuck it. Let's do it sideways. We're, okay, you know what? Yeah. This show <laughs> is sideways. Yeah. The set's going to be sideways. I'm digging it. <laughs> I'm digging it. Um, let's go. Do you like this Carol Baskin look I have going over here? <laughs> um, I, I found a cure to my insomnia recently. I downloaded a white noise app that plays the sound of parents fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I just want to start by saying, men with ponytails, you're ruining porn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not depressed, but sometimes I stand in front of my microwave uh, just to shave off a few years. <laughs> Thank you. My vibe, my vibe is postpartum. <laughs> but I haven't had any kids. <laughs> Thank you so much. I think the tar pit would be a dope name for a heroin recovery center. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I feel like there probably aren't too many murder mystery dinners in Compton. <laughs> I think the tar pit would be a dope name for a heroin recovery center. <laughs> <laughs> I used to think that if you had gloves in your glove compartment, you were a murderer. Now I think you're a sensible human being. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't stop thinking about how weird encyclopedias were in the 90s. Like, they made no sense. Everyone was like, we're going to put a bunch of random shit that has nothing to do with each other into one book. The only thing they're going to have in common is that they all start with the same letter. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because one day, somebody's going to want to study lemons and then lemurs, and this is going to be a one-stop shop. <laughs> do you know how fucked you were in the 90s if you had to do a report on oj simpson and it was 96 but your britannica collection was from 92 <laughs> <laughs> You'd be talking about how he killed it on the field and not how he killed his wife. <laughs> I like to judge people by the type of food they consume. For example, if you're a man and you drink strawberry milk, you have a weak dick. <laughs> a lot of strawberry milk drinkers in the audience tonight. <laughs> What about drinking celery juice turns you into a cunt? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, if you call your wine mommy juice, you shouldn't have had any kids. <laughs> My roommate's been drinking a lot of bone broth recently, which disgusts me because bone broth sounds like the name for the wet spot on your sheets after sex. <laughs> yes. Is that is that five minutes? It's got to be. Yeah, it's about five minutes. Sarah Wanchek, everybody. Sarah hey, Wanchek. Yeah, of course, whose set is brought to us by Jamie Kennedy's Bone Broth, the sponsor of our program. Yes. Yes, which, by the way, uh, Sarah, I do think that it would be amazing if you had a, like, Jamie Kennedy-style prank show called Shanked, 
where you yes. just stab somebody in the prison yard and like that's the whole <laughs> that's like you've been shanked and then they come out and they die anyway point is tip jar is that. open tip jar is open if you want to tip sarah hilarious said if you want to tip sarah uh you can do so venmo top right of the screen uh paypal through laughfromhome.com you get the paypal address on there or of course you can throw in some facebook stars or super chats on youtube uh, and thank you uh for all who are supporting and doing that and may i just quickly suggest sarah maybe now that your set's done if you want to take your phone off the tripod and just flip it and hold it in your hand or something if you try <laughs> just so we can see what you look like normally oriented and while she does that i will share the fact that oj simpson actually had a prank show called juice years no. after his, oh yeah years after his murder trial where he literally would hop out of the bushes and scare people. Oh my God. No! <laughs> the war, literally, he would dress up like a clown and stuff and jump out of the out of the bushes and, and, and scare people, which is like a reverse prank show because the reveal is much scarier than the prank. <laughs> yeah. Be like, 100%. oh my God, a scary clown, how shitty. And they say, I'm his mask. And OJ Simpson, you're like, oh my God, <laughs> He's like, holy shit, it's an actual murderer. What a weird, what a weird twist. <laughs> right. That's dude. insane. I, I have that a feeling Ben insane. knows about that. I, I have a feeling Ben knows about that show because he was a writer on that show. Were you not a writer on that show? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was a writer on it. Non-union. Non-union gig. <laughs> um, Sarah, your web series is, is called Stone Science, right? Not High Science. It's called Stone Science. And then I have another web series on Comedy Central called Shanks for Smoking. Oh. Shanks <laughs> for Smoking. Love that. Yeah. yeah. Nice. By the way, uh, some tips coming in. Uh, so shouting out some people. Corey Johnson throwing 50 bucks on the Venmo. Much appreciated. And said, after the tip, it is nothing but the shaft. So thank you much uh, for starting with the tip. Appreciate it. Uh, Brianna Calkins threw in t uh, 10 bucks. Says, got my stimulus check today. Uh, stimulating for all y'all. Making everyone watching smile. Thank you again. I appreciate everything that you're doing. Thank you very much, Brianna. We do recommend you save the rest of that check. Uh, and <laughs> Uh, Jason uh, Benicki Critchlow uh, paid a, a threw in ten bucks. A Thursday show, big shout out. Uh, wait, Thursday show. What? That's tomorrow. <laughs> Isn't that our that's special to, fundraiser show? That's tomorrow. Right yes, but that's not. Uh, that's a private show. Uh, it says Where big shout out for, uh, for Todd. <laughs> no, because the rest of it is big shout out for Todd McComas oh. for letting me know about this show. Oh, uh, I think that person just doesn't know the laws of time and space, which is understandable given the current situation. <laughs> <laughs> With <laughs> Adler threw in uh, five bucks. Uh, oh wait, that's a that's an entry for the contest. Um, and then uh, Alan Shaw tips uh, tips five bucks to Sarah. Says may as well give you my salary reduced budget for the week. Damn. Uh, a, young, a child of of a man who drinks strawberry milk and a and a woman who drank celery soda. I I felt that set. So just, uh, <laughs> Tyler Stevens throws in three bucks for Sarah. Says good God, that was hilarious. Uh, awesome. And then uh, a huge one from Z Bunster, uh, the patron saint of our show. Uh, the Bunst who throws in two hundred dollars and says, in honor of Jackie Robinson Day, much appreciated Bunts, Jackie Robinson, personal hero of mine, uh, and Same. Hero of my dad's. So uh, so thank you much, much appreciated. Wow, thank you, Bunster. Amazing. Thank you. It means so much to us. Thank you so very much. Uh, Rachel, Rachel, what do we got? Rachel. Yeah, we've got some stuff coming in on YouTube too. Um, so tips for Sarah, we have Julia Sullivan on Facebook gave um, 50 stars. She had um, Heather Scott on YouTube, seven dollars, and said it depends on the gloves, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> we have um, Nathaniel Crawford tipped Sarah five dollars and said, uh, Sarah, I hear a lot of white noise from the house next door. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Duntalk tipped uh, five dollars and said, "Bone broth is going to haunt my dreams." <laughs> <laughs> but we if you do Jeremy get bone broth, please make sure it is Jamie Kennedy brand bone broth. <laughs> <laughs> Sponsorship of the show. It is just happy to give it to you. Water. They'll ship some right to you. Pool water from <laughs> Jamie Kennedy's pool. Jamie Kennedy's Fresh brand bone broth. That is such a hard thing to say. <laughs> it's really not that hard. It just makes you flustered, Steve. It's, look, I've lost all my powers for my hair. Um, we have a couple more tips for Sarah. We've got uh, 
Jeremy Day, $5 for Sarah Brilliant set. Uh, Lena Sutherland, $5. Thanks for the laughs. Um, and then Jessica Kibble, $25. Sarah, for the most original background, that took effort. That's yes. awesome. <laughs> nice. Hell yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Um, Todd, yes, question sir. for you. Because, yeah. you know, a lot of people have talked about, you know, the whole like good cops and bad cops thing. And I, I did a bunch of jokes on my last special about shitty cops and people mm -hmm. automatically would like get mad at me and just be like, oh, you're saying all cops are shitty. I'm like, no, some cops are shitty. Like, yeah. how do you deal with that as one of what I assume? Look, I've never seen you police, but I assume you were you were a good cop. Yeah. Like how do you well, deal with that? Well, I was, it was easy. I was undercover. So I'd just sit around and be like, yeah, I think cops are shitty too. And then, just, <laughs> <laughs> and then they were like, show me your dick. And you're like, all right. <laughs> like, yeah, I can make fun of cops now. I'm not one, right? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Todd, Todd, I want to talk a little bit about, so we all saw Tiger King or most of us saw Tiger King in the world. And then yeah. you got to go interview uh, the guy from Indiana. So one of the guys from Tiger King uh, is from Indiana and you're like, fuck it, I'll tweet him and just went down and did a documentary about that dude. How'd that it, come about? Yeah, Tim Stark, man. Well, we were covering Tiger King like the rest of the podcast universe on Doc Heads. And I was like, oh, I'm going to reach out to this dude. He only lives an hour and a half from me. And he was my favorite character on the on the show. Just because he, he had that, you know, way of just tearing people down with his words. And uh, I was like, all right, <laughs> let's go see him. And uh, he was up for it. We, hell, I took a film crew. We stayed there all day. I held a bunch of monkeys and uh, watched the baboon <laughs> shit all over his recliner. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. It was awesome. Like, you, you don't realize how vulnerable you are until you're in a room with the door shut with a nine-year-old baboon. Because you're like, this baboon could kill us all in all of three seconds. And we're just going to have to sit here and be like, yeah, oh, yeah. You're, yeah, Tim, you're awesome. You're, you're hilarious. I'm like, I'm not going to laugh. He has a fucking killer baboon on his lap. <laughs> need that for our set. If we all had a killer baboon on the stool, yeah, we would all oh, be so much better. <laughs> that is why they are named baboons. That's exactly yeah. why God named them baboons, because they're bad ass creatures. Yeah, they are. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and Ben, they, they, Logic. they shit nonstop. Like, he, he did three segments. He did one segment that was an hour long with three spider monkeys on him, one with an owl on him that was an hour long, and one that was an hour long <laughs> with this baboon. And I'm not kidding. That baboon, it was just one hour of constant shitting. He just constantly. <laughs> <laughs> Third time. I'm like, Makes for great footage. Oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah. Sarah? Diapers. Can you? Can you see the like a ba baboon's butthole? Like you know how you can see like a cat's. I know that's a weird <laughs> question, but you, it just you, popped up in my head. <laughs> you, you can see the baboon's asshole because their asshole is actually on the outside of their body. That's what I was wondering. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you for clarifying. But they that. they also have a bumper sticker next to it that says, "If you can see this, you're driving too close." <laughs> 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 Isn't it weird? Since we're talking about this, maybe I can get the Isolation Nation's opinion on this. Um, I contend that I was never able to see my dog's butthole. My girlfriend disagrees, and he got like a particularly close cropped grooming a few months ago, and then all of a sudden I could see it every day. And is that just because they cut hair out they shouldn't have cut? What's happening? Yeah, you, probably. You, you gave your dog a Brazilian. I don't think you're supposed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Hair now at all. It's pretty incredible. <laughs> Don't let Carol Baskins hear that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, where'd I go? Collect the life insurance money until five years and a day after. So you'll be fine. What happened um, to me? Oh, I have a question for you. Um, along the lines of the great tip you gave us about asking police officers to show their private parts to us to know if they're a cop or not. Um, <laughs> And you end for once and for all the the great question. If a cop's undercover, if you ask them if they are a cop, do they have to tell you or not? No, you can lie your ass off. That's just part really? of it. Yeah. Everybody thinks that too. Like it's so easy to be undercover because they all think they have the secret formula and they're like, Hey, you know, if you're a cop, you have to tell me. And I'm like, duh, yeah, the whole world knows that, bro. And so <laughs> <laughs> And I show my dick anyway, so. 
<laughs> also, the only way to get 50% off of McDonald's for being a cop. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ID? Uh, Here's my dick. <laughs> yeah, by the way, uh, we got another five bucks from Brianna Coggins and says, thanks for pronouncing my name uh, correctly two days in a row. Uh, much appreciated. That's why you Venmo that instead of super chatted. So I would read it instead of Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. uh, Ronald, Ro Ronald Rhodes uh, threw in five bucks and says, uh, thanks, Todd, for the heads up on this. And uh, we'll need to watch the old ones, too. I assume uh, yeah, the old to. ones of his. Yeah. And then uh, also Dave Adler threw in another dollar 80 and said, hey, everybody. So much appreciated to all of you guys I, uh, for supporting Steve, the show. I think we need to make a uh, super cut edit of all of Rachel's responses to our trash talking her. It was be her being like, fuck off. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Just one of her as a PETA. <laughs> By the way, if you do want to buy the uh, the hot dog shirt that is behind me, uh, that, so that is the full shirt. We have it in, um, we have it in one in baby onesie as well in various sizes. We have it as hoodies. Uh, join the isolation nation. Show your show your pride. Uh, and uh, it comes through the post. Never say of like, hey, you got to go support the. Po Usually, I'm like, fuck the postal service. But now I'm like, no, we kind of need them. So you can you can get those at uh, you get those at laughfromhome.com. That's also why we decided to um, make sure the shirts were delivered through the postal service was to support them during this time of need. And also that was the only option. <laughs> uh, the thing, if you want to know for sure, if they're a postal worker, just ask them to show you their dick. And... <laughs> they do. They are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, you are a mailman. Thank wait, you. Sure. I will take that. Let. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, with the it. with the UPS drivers, you don't even need to ask. It just hangs out of the truck. Some <laughs> <laughs> jobs, even when they're not showing you their private parts, because no matter what time of year it is, it's raining, it's snowing. There's a tornado coming, windstorms. They are driving with shorts and no door. <laughs> Gotta hand it to them. Yeah, my uh, my dad. Uh, my dad drove for FedEx. And uh, it was just one of these things where I was like, hey, why don't you have a door? And he was like, well, because it speeds things up if you don't have a door. I'm like, it also speeds things up if you don't get fucking frostbite. You live in New York. Get a door. Yeah. Like, yeah. This makes no sense. <laughs> That's By such the way, a management decision. Yeah. Yeah. For that. <laughs> yeah is it is it, it cheaper they like well we don't have to make the full truck we'll save some money by having no doors yeah exactly that the, yeah and also we won't have to pay pensions because no one will stay here and work a full career because they don't have a door in their van yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you get a call from that. having no door in your van maybe we recommend jamie kennedy's hey. door for all your <laughs> door needs <laughs> <laughs> hilarious i've got some uh, more i will say this after in. after being the hot dog for a day and then i made the hot dog video the next day i was immersed in hot dogs in their world for like a whole day i don't think i can ever eat hot dogs again it's kind of freaking me out <laughs> this is an absolute lie. For one you minute, are eating. You see? Yeah. Can you not even see yourself you're eating a hot dog right now <laughs> can you not even do you not even know <laughs> Also, there's now very few foods left that you can possibly eat, Bauer. So. <laughs> I love also the idea that like Bowers doesn't give a fuck about actual animal rights, but as soon as he anthropomorphized hot dogs, he was like, oh my God, oh my God. You're not worried about the cows. You're worried about what if hot dogs came to life. He's a family. Oh, they come eight at a time. Yeah, I, I named them all. That's the problem. I named all my hot dogs. Now I can't eat them. Like <laughs> hey, Rachel, what else we got on the Super Chats coming in? Uh, we have um, another tip for Sarah coming in. Corporal Skyfall, two pounds, and said, sorry, it's not much, but you're so funny from Sky, uh, the UK. Cool. And then we have um, some generals, two to, two to rescue, $5.18. What is it called when you... What is it called when you give on all four? When three is a hat trick, wig whopper, hot dog flipper, cheese stringer, queen tortilla. That's, oh, that's oh so that's like, are, is he taking a poll? I'm so confused. I think <laughs> so. I think he was just trying to flub me up. 
the oh <laughs> yeah if you guys want to super chat with tongue twisters we would really appreciate that <laughs> here if you guys want to super chat with the most complicated character names from fantasy novels that would also be great if you guys could do that <laughs> magic spells maybe they, they don't yeah, have to be that cop they don't they don't be that complicated <laughs> if you guys want to super chat with two syllable Basic words work too absolutely yeah. <laughs> uh, well in that vein we had jeremy h uh tip five dollars and said we we still want the game to be rachel pronouncing words at some point sorry queen but i told you we wouldn't let them forget oh yeah okay. absolutely that's also happen. rachel that's a really weird one you just mispronounced it's L, but it's not H, it's L. That's really weird. You just misread the letter. <laughs> it's not funny. But... It was a solid, that I know, was, I was it was a good say attempt. The first name, I just couldn't remember if it was Jeremy or Jason, and then I would have been funnier with the lead in, and I got stuck in the middle, and it was a bad moment for me. And when you talk crap to somebody, <laughs> don't fuck up your delivery, and I'm sorry, and you can super cut me now, Rachel. Tell me to fuck up or something. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. I love you, Ben. <laughs> oh, thank you. I love you too. Yeah, we Ben, have... I just, I just want to know, uh, is this your idiot test? <laughs> 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 what am I biting into there? A lemon? Am I, did I just? Uh, no, it's actually happened? a lemur. You could do the research, though. They're they're <laughs> close to each other. I freeze frame very badly. Feel free, anybody watching this, to freeze frame or screenshot any moment of me. And I guarantee 80% likelihood it will be a very unattractive freeze frame. And you can upload it with hashtag SDSC and hashtag bleed freeze frame. I've been screenshotting this whole show. I'm going to send a montage after it's done. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. But, but, he, but he means of his dick, not of you, Ben. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just proving I'm retired. JC, you, you can see how good a set is by, by you can see a, how good a set is by how many super chats it gets, or how hard Todd is, depending on the. Oh. <laughs> Uh, all right, Rachel, do we have anything else? Or should we, or we, do. we go to our next comic? All yeah, right, we'll, we... do, we'll catch up, and then we'll go to our next comic. Okay. We've and got uh, and a reminder, also, the game is uh, Best Cop Stories, if you want to submit Best Cop Stories. Um, we had a comment from that Lane boy and asked if we could have an honorable shout-out to a 99-year-old man in the UK who's doing a sponsored 99 laps around his garden. His goal was 1,000 pounds, and he, now he's raised over 10 million pounds. Wow. Uh, well oh, then, yeah. no. Oh, he doesn't yeah. need shit from us. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he's got ten million pounds. He's fine. He's ninety nine. You know how long it takes to spend ten million pounds? Longer than he has. Wow. It's, I'm not. You think that was me? All right, fine, fine. Just leave me hanging. Leave me out to dry. I appreciate that. <laughs> Funny joke about time. Hakuna Matata. <laughs> We're gonna say this guy raised ten million pounds. Let's not wish him to die until he gets done with his lap. I don't wish him to die. I'm just saying that's gonna take a couple of years to spend. It's it's, it's a lot of money. I, think I mean, you shaved charity. your head he's, and you really became charity. a hardcore dude. <laughs> I apologize. That wasn't me. That was Remy from Higher Learning. I apologize. <laughs> By the way, you guys were with me in the whole like, oh, he doesn't need any money. And then I'm like, yeah, because he could die. And you guys were like, oh, fuck, no, that was completely inappropriate. Well, yeah. I, by the way, Rachel, I think he was raising for charity, right? Like he's not yeah, raising yeah, yeah, yeah. for so, his old 99 year old ass to spend on strippers. He's like trying to help right. people. And Steve wants him to die. I, I, I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean to. <laughs> I'm gonna put a hat time. on. It's it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I didn't. Wa I don't want him to die. And it's great he's raising for charity. You didn't mention that part in the thing. And people were giving him money. <laughs> Where is Steve as an closest. egg when you need it? <laughs> right here, actually, as it turns out. Here, hold on. Here you go. Here's Steve as an egg. Here you go. Thank Steve's you. an egg. Yeah. Hard bullet. That's, that's the closest yeah. I've ever seen Steve to apologizing. You didn't say that part. That's the... <laughs> Look, Barrett, you want me to apologize? I'm sorry you five, didn't get five. the joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. That's the Steve I know. Of. That's so off center. 
I love, <laughs> I love now that during quarantine days, time is no longer marked by the traditional Roman calendar of days passing, but now is instead marked by which jacket Bowers is wearing. Today's Pac-Man day, guys. Yeah. <laughs> that is also something exactly. that we have said on the show before, but thank you, Ben, for <laughs> <laughs> highlight reel for us and also for taking the bullet because right there, I was in the I was in the crosshairs. I picked up, and Ben, as nice as he is, was like, you know what? I'm going to give you something that's so easy yeah, to make yeah. fun of that you guys yeah, are going to forget yeah, about how big yeah. of a dick Steve was. Let me just let me just uh, let me just say he, he, he that with, he I think the it's my turn to reply to that bullet. Into me. Great. <laughs> that's for it, Ben. What? No, no. No, no, you first. <laughs> What was your pearl of wisdom you were going to say? I, I love how, how Ben dove in, dove in front of the bullet net for Steve and deflected it at me. That was very nice. Thank you. You're right. My jacket. I'm a dick for the jacket. So that you saved Steve. Like, see, what are we doing? You're, what are we doing? We're fighting now. Let's just all, can we all take a breath and just decide that we're funny again? We look, you're so? very well. I'll just agree that my joke about the dying old guy was hilarious. Can we all come together? <laughs> People. I think put, our, put I think everything behind Steve us. Steve shaves his head, and now, if you can quickly show the shot of him right now, this is now what Steve's comedy audiences will look like with the new look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. All right. My favorite back. part of that is that that was the joke that Ben was going to do right away to shoot back at me, and Bowers was like, "No, yep. I have to explain Ben's other I jokes know, first." Yep. <laughs> That's correct. We were back. God damn it. <laughs> we still are. We still are. All right. Let's do another set. <laughs> Let's do another set. Let's do that. Are we ready? Okay. Next comic up to the stage. Uh, amazing guy. You saw him. He was a finalist. Came in third. Actually, America's Got Talent the last season of the show. And then was all we had. And then also was in the champions. Give it up for a very funny Ryan Niemeller, everybody. Ryan Niemeller. Hey. Hi, guys. How are you? Awesome. Good. Good. Yeah, I was going to announce my uh, my new charity stream, but uh, Steve might wish me dead. So I'm going to go ahead and just do jokes <laughs> instead. I think that's uh, what we're going to do. <laughs> dead on that. Um, uh, I also I wanted to start because like I know that we were going to do like the, the cop story thing. But like I literally have, don't have any cop stories because I get pulled over. They realize they're not going to handcuff me and they just let me go. <laughs> Like nothing ever happens. It's amazing. It's like, yeah, I'll, I'll get the hooker home safely. Don't worry about it, officer. I got this. Really fine. This is kind of cool getting to do like stand up from the same place that I watch porn. <laughs> Closed. Oh, this is awesome. Uh, I, I, haven't, I haven't been too bothered about this whole Corona thing because like I, it, it takes me half the time to wash my hands. I've been so <laughs> damn productive. This is amazing. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, it, it's been cool getting to stay home a little bit. Like, obviously, I'd rather be out working, but I was traveling a ton. Like, I was going nuts. Like, after AGT ended, just nonstop travel. Uh, and I have a reputation in comedy, too, of doing really long drives, like 13, 14 hour drives to get to gigs. Uh, and that and that was getting pretty terrible, you know, because like you do 14 hours, you have to stop at like public restrooms all the time. And like public restrooms are just universally the worst. Like, you ever get into a public <laughs> restroom, you just walk in and you're just like, I think I'm just gonna shit my pants. I think that's <laughs> my pants. Given the circumstances here, that is the best option. <laughs> Everyone at the wedding will understand. <laughs> I, I was having some rough travel stuff though. I was doing um, some work down in Alabama a few months ago and I just stayed at a hotel uh, and I woke up the next morning with ticks. Like I had a tick like in my back. Like that, that's something they don't warn you about being a road dog in comedy. Is that you might get, like, like clearly by looking at me, like this is my video game collection here. I'm a nerd. I stay away from outdoors because that's where ticks live. <laughs> So it was awful. Like I had to go to like an urgent care and spent like $160 to get it removed, which is the first time I've ever paid money to get something to stop sucking me. So that was nice. That's <laughs> 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 watching 
because they were a fan of me on AGT is like, oh heavens no. This is <laughs> this is not. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, uh, because I'm an idiot, I started dating someone right as this started. Um, so I can just basically be quarantined 2,000 miles away from someone you just date, which is nice, though. I think it's good because, like, when you first get into a relationship, you tend to be a lot more sexual. And there's no way I wouldn't end up with a pregnant girlfriend at this point. And, like, <laughs> I, I, I don't want kids. Like, I'm, I'm so tired of people's kids. Like, like, it's the worst. Like, that's been a nice thing about this is people aren't talking about their kids quite as much <laughs> no one cares no one cares right now there's a lot more things to worry about than your kids soccer practice and how that's going <laughs> it's getting rough because when you don't have kids like you're happy for your friends that have kids but you just you can't relate in any way like I had a, a friend she lives in Austin Texas I live in Indianapolis Indiana she had a kid last summer and she was like hey Ryan are you gonna fly down here to see the baby and I was like no I wouldn't fly down if it was my baby. What is the matter with you? <laughs> Just to inconvenience your life. That's like an entire weekend. What is <laughs> I, I don't think I'm I'm mature enough to have kids yet. I don't think I'm at that point in my life. Like I'm immature. Because like here, I'm gonna give you guys this little insight of how my brain works. I don't even have a full joke for this yet, but this is something I worry about. So like my friends are old enough, they're all starting to have kids. Great. What if, now hypothetically, my buddy, him and his wife, they have a kid. If that kid happens to be born with a disability, he's going to think I fucked his wife. Like, that's <laughs> a real worry <laughs> in my mind. Heaven forbid that kid's a ginger. I have to leave the country. <laughs> He'll never believe me. Chance in hell. <laughs> And the, and the other thing I'm getting sick of, too, is, like, when people, like, like, everyone thinks their kid is so smart. Like, everyone thinks their kid is, like, extra smart compared to other kids. Like, and that's not true. Because, like, even the smartest kid is an idiot. Like, that's how that works. <laughs> like, and I'm living proof of it. Uh, when, when I was growing up through, like, elementary school, I was, like, on the advanced track. So I was taking all of these, like, advanced courses. When I was eight, I was reading at, like, a 48th grade level or whatever thing that they use as a metric <laughs> for how smart you are. Like, I, I was a genius kid. They were talking about, you know, putting me into college early, all this stuff. And yet still, once a week, I would still go outside and take a shit in the yard just to see why the dog liked it so much. So... <laughs> So all I'm saying basically is everyone pump the brakes a little bit on your genius kid thing. This is what it can turn into. All right. I'm Rodney Miller, you guys. Thank you. Uh, by the way, I think that is a genius thing to do. You're shitting the yard to see if the dog, why the dog likes it. That's a science experiment. He was so happy. To learn about nature. He was so, because if you ever ask a dog, like, hey, you want to go outside? He's like, yeah, I do. Let's go. He's, he's so excited. Yeah. Maybe he's on to something. I oh, I've tried a similar experiment. I sometimes when I need to get my dog to pee outside. If it's raining or something, I'll go pee outside. And he just looks at me and goes, hmm, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> to understand, I'm trying to encourage him. He thinks that's my thing, bro. What I'm, what I'm uh, terrified of, by the way, is that you told us on an episode, I think maybe even yesterday, that you just remembered you had a yard. So I'm afraid of where. <laughs> uh, that said, uh, Tip Jar is open for Ryan Niemiller, uh, one of my favorite comics. Uh, Ryan is someone who I have I've said it before and I'll say it again. Almost impossible to follow. Rips the roof off the room. Uh, and so I'm so glad he's getting the, you know, the the attention and the and the adulation that he deserves. Uh, Tip Jar is open top right of the screen uh, for Venmo or you can pay out laugh from home dot com. Or, of course, you can super chat on the YouTube. We've already got Patrick Daniel threw in five bucks. It says Club Nub, great set, Ryan. Um, and then uh, Erica Church just threw in another 20 bucks. It says, thanks for the laughs, Ryan. So we've already got some coming in. That's uh, my sister. And I'm sure more to come. Uh, oh, that's awesome. And also, yeah. uh, also uh, I'm, in the, I'm in the woods now where you can get ticks. So be careful, everybody. <laughs> uh, Rachel, we got anything more coming in? We do. We've got... Um... Let's see, Jessica uh, Kybel, $25, $25, and said, Ticks, Ryan, I can't breathe. <laughs> um, oh, the I word is, the word is thanks. Please be very careful. No, she, she, said, she said thanks, Rachel. It's... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we have Jeremy H tipping five dollars. Ryan, great set. Set. I'd give more, but I'm going broke from the SDSC. Honestly, it's it's weird to be interacting where I watch porn. <laughs> <laughs> Just chime in really quickly uh, there, Rachel. It's Jeremy L. <laughs> no bad. Oh, see, they set the first one, so the callback would be funny. That that's was the greatest yeah. callback ben, in yeah, internet history. Yeah, yeah, ben, way to workshop that joke over the last Thank seven you. minutes when I was that talking. Was it, really, it really worked out. <laughs> also, watching. I'm also watching from where I watch porn, uh, The Woods. So it's not weird at all. Uh, we've also got uh, Tyler Stevens threw in $3, said for Ryan, uh, OMFG, you killed it. I laughed so hard I drooled. Uh, Morgan uh, Galaznik threw in $8, said Ryan Neemiller, we can't wait to see you live. Awesome, Morgan. He's live now. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great point. We know what you mean, I'm being a dick. All right, sorry, it's the hair. Uh, what else we got, Rach? <laughs> So we've got um, Heather Scott, $7. Them, are you going to come see the baby? Me, no thanks, I've seen one. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, if you guys are interested, you can see Steve's new stand-up show, if you can cut to Steve real quick, in that shack in the background behind him. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, still going to be empty. Still going to be empty. <laughs> I, I think that you should never put yourself in front of a background of a woods if your head is shaved and you're very, very light complected. That's, that's <laughs> because everything about that just wants me to preface it with the the word neo hyphen. Yeah. <laughs> like, cause, cause I'm the one true one who understands how yes. that neo, right? Yeah. This is, no, you're neo Hofstetter. You're a neo Hofstetter right now. Yeah. Okay. Fine. How about how about this? Is this more appropriate for someone who's bald, who's who's got his head shaved? Is this a, is this a that's better way one? better? That's way better. I feel like you're getting ready to figure some shit out. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. I Hold on. What about the manifesto shack though? That was really yeah. old rusty this? typewriter in there. This is now me in my lair. <laughs> and you can also tune into our new live streaming show starting every Thursday from two p.m. until five p.m. It's called. Steve Hofstetter's fun with photos. Really <laughs> great. Steve's a background comic now. He's a background comic. He <laughs> He's trying to get background work in this business for years. He finally got it work. <laughs> All right, I'll change I'll change the background back to Bowers' last show. <laughs> okay. I'm just the same joke I made about you earlier. Just, to, just for the record. Just yeah, for the but record. actually, no. This is a small. This is an empty, smaller room. <laughs> yeah, good point. That's a very good point. I'm impressed he can afford very to rent point. all those chairs. That's right. <laughs> You're doing well, Bowers. Yeah. I'm not going to go to a thousand seat theater because like a fifty seat room. So I've got forty two people to go. We got it. We're almost there. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what else we got, Rich? We have Carrie tips uh, Ryan five dollars. Ryan funds towards your paternity test to show the little blood sucker that you're not the father of that 18 year burden. <laughs> nice. <Wow. laughs> that comment does, comes does Carrie with think I got baggage. pregnant? <laughs> that I got pregnant with the tick bite? Is that what? <laughs> Is that how the, how the tick became a superhero? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he bit Ryan Nemo by a tick and then, <laughs> and then had, a, so a tick, had a baby. So a tick bit Ryan Nemo and it became a superhero. The, blood. the tick is an actual not, superhero. Not that is holy shit. Did, okay, we're so it's an empty room. All right, so who? what else do we have? <laughs> Lena yeah, Sutherland. I think this has been a great run for four weeks, and thank you for becoming fans of our show, and good night, everybody. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> final episode. All right. Close it out. I'm the closer. And we're NBC closer. just announced they're canceling us, and we're not even on NBC. That's how bad this is. <laughs> By the way, Emma Cook threw in 10 bucks and says Ryan is the bomb.com. And uh, Nicholas Hunt threw in 10 bucks and says Love Club Nub. Saw you live in Naples. It was amazing. Thanks for the laughs. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. We've got awesome. Lena Sutherland, $5. Uh, fantastic set. Thanks for the laugh. 
Um, Duntalk, $5. Great set, Ryan. Chris Jacobs, $5. Amazing set, Ryan. Um, Amansala, $5. Ryan, people stopped bragging about their kids because once parents started teaching them at home, they realized their kids are actually not very bright. By the way, if you are if you are quarantining with your children and you're having trouble teaching them uh, phonics, Rachel is available for tutoring via Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel on phonics worked for me. Yeah. Oh, Rachel on phonics worked for Ma. <laughs> Rachel on phonics worked for Chris Bowers, but he also does not eat fruits or vegetables and thinks pizza is healthy. So <laughs> I feel like that's a long tagline, Ben. But thank it you for making long. Thank, thanks for making us feel better about I bombed earlier, Bowers bombed earlier, <laughs> and you were like, you know what? I feel bad for these guys. So thank you. Absolutely. Heart- I'm doing my next stand-up show in this room. Am I right, everybody? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't wait to so- see how he calls back to that at the end. It's gonna be fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> So, Todd, we're doing cop stories. What, get, do you have a fun cop story you haven't told in a minute? You wouldn't mind telling us, our audience a fun cop story? I don't want to put you on the spot, but you have a million fun cop stories, right? Yeah, man. I, I, I kind of um, – I wasn't the perfect cop, so I have, that means I have all kinds of great stories. Um, <laughs> <laughs> probably my favorite one, which may – because I, you know, I like all the ones where, like, I, I it probably should have caused me to die, but didn't. Those are the funniest to me. So when um, – on, on – Toward the end of my career, they put me on this newly created team called the Fugitive Apprehension Team. And all we did was track down fugitives. And so it was me and a bunch of young dudes. And I, I, I kind of looked up to the young dudes like I needed to know what was cool about police work at this point. Right. I'd been hidden away undercover and in a wiretap room for a long time. I'm like, oh, what's what's cool in the world? And I would see, you know, new holsters they would wear and shit. And I'm like, ah, oh, that guy looks cool. I should go get me one of those. Well, everybody on my team had ankle guns and I was like, well, I should probably, I should probably give me an ankle gun. It looks pretty cool. So I uh, went out and I got an ankle gun. Now I didn't have a holster for this little 38 that, that fit it precisely, but they had one for a 380, which is a similar size. I was like, I'll take that one. Velcro's in your ankle and I do it. Next day we go to work and they hand out, we have the briefing and they hand out all the warrants for the day. And there was three of them. And I was like, all right, well, this is a big day for me because the first warrant was for a trailer and I was our door kicker. And I'm like, <laughs> trailers are big days for door kickers. Because <laughs> doors go way easier than regular doors. It's like so much better at kicking doors than you really are, right? Because there's less infrastructure. So I'm like, oh, feeling good. And I got, you know, the new ankle gun on. I can feel the weight of it. I have a little extra confidence. I'm like, oh, if I lose the main gun, no big deal. Boom, got a backup. So I'm good. So I, I'm feeling really good about the day. 6 a.m. We hit the first the first target. And it's a trailer. And now I, I didn't know which leg to put the ankle gun on because I never really had to negotiate that before. So I'm, I'm, I'm a right handed shooter. So I went outside my right ankle. And it was a, it was a mistake because I also kick with my right leg. And so when it came go time, I kicked this trailer door. And I mean, Ben, best kick of my career. Like I could not <laughs> it like, you hit something so hard. You don't have the impact like that clean. I hit it. So I hit it so hard that my, my leg hyper extended and my knee locked and the ankle gun holster came loose with the Velcro and it was not made for that gun anyway. So both the holster and gun go out from the leg of my pants and the gun, go sliding across the linoleum floor into the trailer right at said bad guy. And also- <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> if you're watching, you were my team leader, verify this. So I <laughs> so hard also that the door swing swung back and it hit the wall behind it, bounced off, came back and shut to right in my face. So 
now I'm like, oh, holy shit. And I got a team of five guys like pushing, like, go, 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 we gotta go, because speed's everything when you enter a door. And I'm like, you guys just fucking wait. There's a in there. <laughs> and my sergeant's like, how do you know? I was like, because it's mine. <laughs> So finally, we, we hit the door and we go in as fast as we can. And luckily, luckily, the bad guy was like laid down in the prone position on his stomach with his hands behind his head. And he looked up at me and he's like, yeah, I ain't falling for your gun across the floor, bullshit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's my favorite memory ever. That's incredible. What a I actually have a picture is. of Todd's uh, fugitive recovery team. Oh. Uh, if we could just show that picture real quick. That's, uh... <laughs> my hero, Our... Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> oh, on Fun With Photos tomorrow from 2 to 5 p.m. or whenever the fuck it was. Standard's doing stand up. I want you to search every doghouse. Outhouse and backwoods cabin <laughs> in this territory. <laughs> yeah, if you need help finding the outhouse, uh, here you go. <laughs> Perfect. You just zoom in on that. It's you can't zoom in on the thing. That's how you zoom. It looks closer. I was thinking that's where we keep the C four in the in the outhouse. Yeah. <laughs> no, but Todd slides it across the floor of the outhouse just so they can get it. <laughs> Do we have any contest entries? Do we have to start contest stuff since we're probably a little maybe a little longer stories. Can we, we, can can we catch stories? up? Uh, yeah, let's catch up. Uh, let's catch up on on some more chats. Uh, we've got a uh, Venmo. Uh, Carlin Sander threw in ten bucks. Says sat next to uh, at Cripple Threat Eight, which is Ryan. Uh, that's Ryan's uh, social media on a plane in SLC and learned about his comedy show. Love his stuff. Uh, by the way, also good way to promote just one person next to you on a plane at a time gets you new fans. <laughs> uh, the entirety of the first twelve years of my career yeah. <laughs> was just airplanes yeah, that, and truck stops that, one that, at a time. That, that, that's a step up from trying to make friends at the pilot station in the bathroom after they got just destroyed. It. He's like, "Hey, you want to come to a show? Once you're better." Yeah. Uh, Kayla burned threw in uh, ten bucks. Says I knew that Casper didn't take those shits in the yard. Ryan, uh, that's my so. sister. By the way, she has uh, she has intimate knowledge. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I thought that would be embarrassing, but apparently $10 is my mark for when you can say embarrassing childhood shit about me. So thank you, Kayla. Uh, Jan Johnson threw in 250 and says, just because Steve knew who the tick was, soon. So thank you much, Jan. I'm glad you got the reference. Uh, what else we got, Rich? So we've got uh, Nathaniel Crawford tipped Ryan uh, $5 and said, I loved your stuff on AGT. I've been following you since I discovered you on the fir very first heckler clip of Steve's that I saw. Nice. Well, nice. Yeah, that was We've my got... biggest credit for a while, Steve. So thank you for yeah, just being <laughs> on one of my clips. Oh. I'm glad that I could uh, could make a lady homophobic in the crowd so that you could get two, three million views on it. So you're welcome. That was <laughs> my gift to you, buddy. <laughs> That lady was such an asshole. She was the worst. <laughs> yeah, my favorite thing about that clip, by the way, is that like people, so I, I called her homophobic in the clip and people were like, how is she being homophobic? And in the clip, she says that her friend can't be gay because he's a nice person. And people were like, how is that homophobic? And we're like, that is, what? <laughs> yeah, so Ryan was in that clip. Uh, we also have Razor tipped Ryan $5 and it said it's for Ryan. I just woke up, woke up from sleeping off a migraine and now I'm feeling better from laughing so hard. But then I saw Bauer's jacket and my migraine's back. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I mean, you know face. what's funny about it is during, during the quarantine, we've lost all track of time. Now the only thing that counts days is Bauer's jacket. Yes! Yeah. Yes! <laughs> my fucking hero, bro. Understand this? That was brilliant. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes! This is a clinic, Ben Glebe. This is a clinic. And I'm glad I could be here. Right. See how By it's way, done. I just, you, I just you, want to say that this is the crowd I'm playing to at my next show. 
Hi, guys. Ben's bit, Steve. How dare you? <laughs> For me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, nothing's unusable. Like Ben is the king of like reclaiming material and property, dude. I fucking love Ben. I love Ben. I love Thank you, Todd. I appreciate it, buddy. <laughs> mutual. The field is mutual. Don't shoot me. No. <laughs> CBS has also He's not a cop. Us, He's, so. not a cop. He's not a cop. <laughs> I am not falling for that dumb dick bullshit, bro. Uh, Wait, was that just a way, Todd? Was that just a, a lie and it was just a way to get people to ask you to show them your dick? Yeah, I just made that up right now. I used to, well, I made it up like 15 years ago before I did undercover prostitution stings and I started that rumor. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do those uh, things only work if you i assume you have to always be one of the prostitutes that takes the money up front otherwise you really have to become an actual prostitute to finish that sting operation yeah that's that's what sucks about it i guess i i want to say, <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I did undercover sting for uh, an undercover sting on on some um hand job parlors basically some massage parlors my buddy, he was the, the chief of detectives for this town that had an issue, I guess. And uh, he, he called me. He's like, hey, can you, uh, you think you can find me some undercover guys that would want to come to these uh, jerk off parlors for us? And I was like, ah, yeah, it probably sounds like something I could do myself. I don't think I need help. For that. <laughs> <laughs> well, all of them. And you, you just listen in the parking lot. Well, yeah, it'd be awesome. So, yeah. But they, what? they, Go ahead. Oh no, you go ahead. I was gonna say they. I I never even had to transfer money to to any of them. Like the, I mean, from the get go, they just would do this. They were like, "You want this?" And I'm like, "Yeah, how much?" And they're like, forty dollars." I'm like, "Oh, let me go get it." And they're like, "Oh, you can pay me afterward." There's such trust in the hand job giving community. <laughs> like <it's, laughs> experience. I, I, I have to tell you. Look, if you can't trust the person who's asking for a hand job, who can you trust? I know. It's, it's a crazy world out there. <laughs> uh, we got some more coming in. Uh, Katrina Fry threw in five bucks. Says, thanks for the last. Kate from Aberdeen, Scotland. Thank you much, Kate. Uh, and then we've got a couple contest entries. Uh, Rachel, you want to catch us up and then we'll do the contest? Yeah, we've got like six to go through. So we've got... Um, uh, Peter on Facebook said, Steve, that joke died faster than that old man will. <laughs> <laughs> he says it. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, they should wear a hot dog t-shirt. Send them a hot dog t-shirt on me. <laughs> Ours, you know damn well you can't afford a hot dog t-shirt. Hell. <laughs> <laughs> This show's the most money I've ever made my whole life. $5 at a time. It's amazing. I can buy three <laughs> yeah. hot dog shirts right now. Yeah. <laughs> we got to get we gotta get Bowers a hot dog tuxedo jacket. That's the next step. Oh, you uh, need All it. right, Rach, what else? I also, I also just have to wonder what Bowers' life was like before this show. Because episode one, he's like, this is the best I've ever done in comedy. I've never made mine like this before. I don't know what that <laughs> Like, what were you before just lay around all day shotgunning beers and eating hot dogs doing nothing is that basically <laughs> what your life was well that and i did shows for free around hollywood for a year and a half but i mean I was shows <laughs> <That's five years. laughs> Wait, right. but the rest the, the rest of it's very accurate then yes yeah, so shotgunning beers and waiting for it to be dark so i could go make no money to do a comedy show and get better hoping that someday i'd be on a show with better comics where people would pay us five dollars it's time to burn steve that's been my goal this whole time so I knew <laughs> By the way, this is Bowers' says, crowd for those shows around Hollywood. <laughs> I'm saying, no, I, I'm not. Also, how do you brag about burning a redhead? That's the easiest thing to do. Nature does that shit. It's a strong light bulb will do that. Yeah. Like that's not that big a deal. I'll be here all night, everybody. Thank you so much for coming out. It's been really great having you. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Holding the proper That's... stopper. <laughs> Rachel, what else do we got? 
We've got Hudson in Florida, ten dollars. Thanks, Steve, for the show um, in Orlando right before this stuff started. Even my wife had a good time. Oh wow! That is a bit rude. <laughs> Even my wife had a good time. <laughs> wow. Uh, we have Lewis Tyner, $10. Not sure what I'm doing. Is this how I get my $10 Trump check? Steve-O, is that you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we had Frederick on Facebook give uh, 200 stars. We have Jessica um, Kybel, $15. For Steve, late start for me, but I did like your brick wall. Thank you. We've got Robert Edwards. You know, $2. it's a hot episode when people are like, wow, love the background. <laughs> <laughs> you had good energy. You did great eight jokes about the background. <laughs> Fuck off with your sudden making fun of them. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> we got... Robert Edwards, $2. Uh, we got a solid F off from Raquel. We have nice. Lewis Tyner, $10 and a laughing emoji. Chris Jacobs, $2 and a hot dog emoji. Nice. Uh, Greg Smith, $5. <laughs> oh, this is a tongue twister. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> that seemed like an easy one. That wasn't too hard. <laughs> That's not too hard. So Greg Smith. The six sick sheeks, six sheeps sick. That's not terrible, right? What was yeah, six, six, all it said, all, all it said was thank you for the show. <laughs> <laughs> what sick sheep sheep chick? I didn't the, understand the, anything. The, the six sick sheeks six sheeps sick. Oh, you got yeah. it. Yeah, good job. No, oh, I yeah, totally nailed, nailed that. Really well nailed it. Perfect. It was actually yeah. perfect. It was uh, the best six. ever. Yeah. Uh, Amin Salah gave another fucking. Sound like you were there. giving some kind of prayer before bombing something. <laughs> oh, <no>. oh. <laughs> too far. That may have gone too Show far. Show does not <laughs> stand by that joke. <laughs> this, around the finishing homeland, and I'm sorry. I am sorry. Especially because he's about to bomb that 99 year old man who's just trying to raise money. <laughs> No, no. When you're about to bomb something, what you what you say is, yeah, dude, that 99 year old man isn't going to live long. Than that. <laughs> yeah, you say, welcome to the show. I'm Chris Bowers. And then you just bomb right there. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Ricky Banning threw in uh, six dollars and sixty six cents and says, here's Steve for a wig. Thank you. I appreciate that. That is about the value of the wigs that Ben showed us yesterday. Uh, <laughs> Dennis Baird threw in $2.50 uh, and said for juicy comedy. Uh, I don't even know exactly what that's a reference to. It might be comedy that juice. I look like an orange. Comedy, comedy, oh, comedy, comedy juice. Oh, right. Is the company that I own. My apologies. <laughs> I respect you. I, know, the plug. <laughs> I had hair. He's, what? He's just so shameless in avoiding his own plug. I respect it. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> next, next, someone's gonna be like, "I love the book Ginger Kids." He's gonna be like, "What does that mean?" I'm bald now. I'm a new guy. <laughs> Now I can't write a book about Ginger Kid. I would have to write Chrome Kid. Like it's a completely different book. Yep. See, that's how you bomb, Todd. Uh... You see, that's the point. People can bomb regardless of their ethnic background. That's the lesson today. It is. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, so bad time's not up because you got to oh, end on that oh yeah oh god that was what yeah, what else uh what else we got rachel oh. we got any stories <laughs> we've got uh we've got six to go through um amin salah two dollars another tongue twister this one i think is easy super califragilistic expialidocious nailed it thanks thanks i gotta get a balloon um, background <laughs> Don, done talk uh five dollars rachel we're all witnesses to this workplace bullying uh <laughs> you're right rachel does bully us in the workplace a great deal and thank you for noticing our, she, she, bully, she bullies our ears anyway with her pronunciation okay, the, so <laughs> oh and now we're just being mean uh jake right, m what else, what else we got 
five dollars. Uh, a, co a contribution to the Hofstetter Fund for the Elderly Euthanasia. <laughs> 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 oh god really so when good. i was embarrassed by something i i wouldn't lean forward because i would be so worried about the bald spot but the whole thing's a bald spot now so i'm not worried <laughs> by the way you can get my new book bald spot kid coming out soon um, <laughs> Uh, okay. We've got Jessica Kaibel, five dollars. Steve, are you traveling the world every time you sneeze? Uh, oh, that's a reference to that's, no, that's a reference to oh. one of my clips. But also, yes. Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, Jesse Pitts, five dollars. I love the indie crew: Todd, Chris, and Ryan. Hey, like it. Hell yeah. We've got Jessica Kibble a few different times. Two dollars. Oh my God, am I supposed to be teaching? <laughs> 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 done talk five dollars ben's callbacks make me wonder is this the absolute worst time to have alzheimer's <laughs> <laughs> there's no better last... time to not know what's going on in the world frankly <laughs> yes and then the last one before the contest jessica kibble again five dollars come on ben you have an album sticking out of your head it's oh for the background thing that's why oh, mm. yeah mm. what i don't get it it's it's well your pot it's your podcast thing i don't understand it's, it's, she thought it was an album cover behind you and you were advertising things she, it's a background joke i don't know she i it was, it was and now the contest. Part of your background oh. Yes, now I love it. She's now I love it a lot. That's a good one. That's a good <laughs> one. She was actually, uh, Ben, she was making fun of your ethnic background, like uh, Todd. Oh, earlier. love that. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. Me and all of the Jewish people wish you happy Passover. Thank you so very much. <laughs> uh, as a formerly Jewish person who's now a skinhead, uh, I yeah, let's move on. Steve's okay. next video is going to, to be called Comedian Destroys Own Brand, doesn't even match own logo anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I look more like my play button than I ever did before. <laughs> you call it your play button? That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a great name for it actually it's a pretty good name for it uh, and oh, yeah, again no. it has half a million subscribers so yeah, yeah. <laughs> this play button right. is not a cop we, are, yeah, we, only, we only got 13 minutes left let's see the contest right, let's do it do we want to go to anybody got? in our live audience oh um so we had, I think, uh, Tony, right? Um, if Katie anybody- had a story. Katie had a story. Okay. Katie, I can share mine. Them? Yeah. Okay, go for it. Uh, so a friend of mine and I, we were hanging out with this cop one time and we got super drunk and my friend went to go to this hot dog stand, like a street vendor. And another friend of ours was being this super sweet guy and sober and driving us around. And it was super cold out. And he was like, I got to go find our friend that went, go, went to go get this hot dog. You guys stay here. It's cold. It's fine. And our cop friend stole his car. And so that guy <laughs> had to then walk home in the cold and break into his house because he didn't have his keys. And that cop <laughs> now has three podcasts. Um, Todd, you want to talk about it at all? <laughs> <laughs> Which, which also, by the way, I wasn't a perfect cop. I wasn't a perfect cop. I'm saying, ben, like, in my defense, cop a in my bad defense, friend. Yeah, right. In my defense, I was blacked out drunk when I stole that car. So <laughs> I even remember driving it to Bowers' house. Yeah, which, by the way, the second you said our friend had to go get a hot dog, I'm like, well, Bowers is in this story somehow. <laughs> Poor guy had to walk like three hours to get home in the middle of the winter without his car. And not only that, his apartment keys were on his car key chain. So he had to break into No, no, he couldn't break in. He had to walk again, like another hour to get to his ex wife's house and wake her up to get keys to get into his own home. I ruined this guy's life. 
Like it was the worst <laughs> thing I've ever done in my life. Now, but, remember what I said about how like, oh, you know, there's some bad cops and there's some good cops and Todd's probably <laughs> a good cop. And I apologize. <laughs> I love how in that story, I don't, I think his, his night would have only been actually made worse if he'd also asked you to show him your dick. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't have even worked. But Todd I'm sure, I mean, doing that all night anyway. So now, in, my, yeah. in my defense, I would never steal a car blacked out drunk while on duty. I was off duty, clearly. <laughs> that badge needs doing something to Todd. <laughs> Todd was busy chasing fugitives and he's like, I gotta take my home my work home with me. So, uh, <laughs> all right, let's uh let's take a couple more stories. We're running low on time. We got a hard out because it's a Josh Wolf show. Okay. All right. Um, so some of the ones that uh, we only have four entry or uh, three paid entries. So that's helpful, at least from YouTube. Um, we've got Shelly said, I got pulled over at 2 a.m. I had spilled gin on myself earlier in the night. Cop had me do the field sobriety test. I passed. And then he said he knew I was fine when I was bummed out that I didn't get to do the breathalyzer. <laughs> 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 By the way, the breathalyzer is what he calls his dick, which is weird. So. Um, I've got one, a quick one. I um, yeah. yeah, I was 18, and it was my first time. I a friend, I went with some friends to the strip club, and I got pulled over leaving the strip club. And he asked uh, if I was a stripper, and I said no. And he goes, "Well, do you go there often?" I said no, and. Yeah, that was it. It was weird. And then he let me go. He didn't make me do anything else. <laughs> just wanted to know if I was a stripper. That's just a cop. That's how I greet most women, actually. <laughs> <laughs> hey, are you a stripper? <laughs> All I needed to know. Enjoy your day. <laughs> All right. We've got fear into freedom. Um, into freedom. A small town cop pulled me over, pulled a U-turn from the other side of the road, lights and sirens, a slow approach. Just to tell me he likes my motorcycle. <laughs> Holy shit. Wait, is this a contest entry or was that the... No, no. Okay. Um, and then last one before contest entry, um, Razor uh, had one. He said, when I worked security at Harrah's Las Vegas, the Las Vegas PD would do ho hooker strings in our hotel. This one hooker wearing eight inch heels tried to run while the cop walked after her. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's like Pepe Le Pew and that cat where the cat's just fucking going crazy and he's just fucking floating on the thing. <laughs> All right. Um, so Paige, Jeremy Day. In northern Maine, a cop I know was hunting in his squad car, a shot out shot out his brake lines while grabbing his shotgun and had to call it into dispatch. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> That's almost as bad as giving the perp Holy your shit. gun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Heather Scott. Um, a se uh, she was a female, 17 year old, lied to our parents, um, snuck out, met internet strangers who looked 30. It was very creepy vibes. We got pulled over. They they ditched. That ticket saved us. Oh God! Oh holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> so they, they, too real. They, they, got to, they, they got to catch a predator, and then the cop pulled them over. And the guys ran away. That's fucking good. Yeah. Nice work. Uh, we've got a we've got a couple coming in over here. Uh, Dave Adler threw in five bucks and said uh, uh, said worked as a uh, police fire EMS dispatcher. Deputy with a canine came into the center. We were having dinner. Dog came over sniffing around. Uh, I asked if I could feed the dog fries. He said, yes, I did. And the dog enjoyed them. And then also my fingers. Then the deputy says, oh, you're supposed to say easy. Thanks. Now you tell me. Uh, <laughs> <Jesus> <laughs> what did he do to his finger? He ate them. Uh, bit them. That's actually yeah. my story. The guy's <laughs> my story. That's... <laughs> 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 Never wanted to bring that up again, but here we are. <laughs> this is someone Venmoed on behalf of Ryan to tell that story, by the way. I, I, thought, it was, I, thought, it was, I thought it was sardine oil. 
<laughs> hey Ben, I have I have some quick advice for you. Like, not, not that you would ever do this, but let's say maybe you have a friend somewhere who thought they might want to like transport a large amount of drugs in their car across the country. Sure. Like, and this is drug dog related. Fill your trunk full of tennis balls. Throws them off every time. <laughs> These fucking dogs love tennis balls. They'll lose their mind. <laughs> Get itself, have a heart attack, and die because just be overwhelmed. Oh, look at this. Show the dog your that. Dick. So you can transport <laughs> the drugs <laughs> in the tennis balls. There you go. Yeah. It's chasing the ball. It's a ball. <laughs> it's in your trunk. So. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, tennis balls. Oh, the dogs are <laughs> So Savannah Martin uh, throws him five bucks for the contest, says, I've been pulled over for speeding one time in my life. Asked him what I was supposed to give him. Uh, then one of my tampons fell out of my glove box, and I handed him five expired insurance cards before he got mad and just literally got back in his car and left. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> We've got like that just petered out there and, yeah. got, and, and went to it to Steve's face, just sad. After that, I don't know. I was reading more of the submissions. I, I like to read the submissions to myself before I read them out loud in case they like implicate anybody in a crime. Great advice. So, <laughs> smart, smart. Maybe I should do that and then I can learn how to pronounce. Um, That's a good, yeah. What you do is you say it under your breath three times before you say it out loud. That'll, that'll help. <laughs> We've got uh, Robert Edwards has two entries and then I'm done on YouTube. So, the first one. We got stopped uh, while well, we were drinking weed. We had a giant knife under the seat, all of that. Elio says, uh, go home, they'll get you. Uh, <laughs> and then his second entry is we were underage drinking. The cop came through the door. It was, he says it was high neighbor, but I think he meant my neighbor. It was my neighbor. Oh, like the, like his neighbor, the cop came to bust him and it, it turned out to be his neighbor. I think so. <clears throat> Oh, that is some small town shit right there. Yeah. That does not happen in New York City. <laughs> uh, we've got a couple more. Uh, Christopher Capo threw in five bucks. Uh, says, I got pulled over going 80 in a 40. The cop says, are you drunk, high, or just plain retarded? And I said, the third one, sir, didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I hope that happened in 1960 because yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, yeah, Todd. If you want to let people know what's offensive to say as a cop, uh, the R word for starters. Yes, uh, I would say I, I was do I was doing a call back to before, but we can move on. Don't worry. <laughs> um. All right, and then uh, Rachel, is that all that you got that you have? Yeah, that's all I have. All right. Uh, so, uh, I worked as a convenient, this is Ronald Gould said, I worked as a convenience store and one of our regular cops also worked security for us. Um, but I walked home and found him looking around the neighbor's house. I snuck up behind him and scared him like as a prank, but then he started to draw his gun to turn around and said he was half a second from shooting me. Yeah. Here's a good idea, Ronald. Don't prank a cop with a gun. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm gonna kill you! <laughs> like what the fuck are you doing, dude? <laughs> Be like that that contest entry entry brought to you by white privilege. Right? Uh, <laughs> 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 All right, so we get to, we get to decide uh we get to decide who wins on that one. Uh so uh Ryan, what's your vote? Um I am going to vote for uh I like white privilege guy. Yeah, the, uh, the the snuck up behind a cop thinking it would go well. That's yes. awesome. Uh, all right, what about you, Todd? I think I like the, the neighbor. Like, the, the delivery, sorry, Rachel, the delivery threw me off at first, but what a great story to be busted by your next-door neighbor who you did not realize was a cop. I, I, I like that. I just like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's Todd is just fantasizing about all his neighbors he didn't like and how he should have just busted them up. <laughs> Kick their door in, give them a gun, followed in there. Yeah, I, yeah. I, mean, I would have, but they all had seen my dick, so I could not reveal that that was. My dick. <laughs> that's actually a clause in his HOA. Also, <laughs> Also, the reason for one of my divorces, so that's fine. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm voting for the tampon that fell out of the glove compartment. That's my vote. Mm, good All one. right, we we got a. It's why it's anybody's ball game right now. Glebe, what what are you voting for? Um, first, I'd like to say that we are almost out of time on the show, so I have three pretty solid cop stories I will save for another episode. So there's a cliffhanger for you. Um, Bowers and I are often on the same page when it comes to these votes. I loved the tampons and multiple expired registrations coming out because I many times have been pulled over and pull out many expired registrations. <laughs> I'm going to up my game to include tampons in the future. That's my vote. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, and uh, my vote was the uh, was the person who shot his own brake lines out. Uh, but that doesn't break that doesn't break any ties. So the uh, the winner is uh, confusing the cop. By dropping a tampon and giving expired licenses and somehow getting out of the ticket, which is awesome. Hey. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so Savannah, shoot an email uh, to uh, to the address on the website, uh, laughfromhome.com, and you win uh, all the albums and a future ticket to the front row. Uh, we also have a couple of <clears throat> excuse me, a couple last minute Venmos Kimlin, Jennifer Kofed, uh, threw in uh, two bucks. Says bummed I miss Ryan and all of you tonight. Just wanted to pop in and say hi. Uh, absolutely, check out the replay on Facebook after it's always available on Facebook later. And then uh, Tyler Stevens throws in four bucks, says another awesome show. And Philip Wilson throws in 10 bucks, says thank you for the laughter. Uh, and uh, Rachel, do we have any uh, we need to catch up on on, uh, on YouTube? Nope, all good here. All right, excellent. Um, so that said, Sarah Weinshank had to a, had a leave, but uh, let's plug her stuff real quick. You can follow her on Instagram and Twitter at Princess Shank and check out her podcast shank i've been on it it's really very interesting fun riff podcast and her uh web series stone science check it all out excellent ryan Neemiller. hi uh on everything twitter facebook instagram it's at cripple threat eight and uh hopefully on tour soon <laughs> when this all <laughs> opens up again <laughs> yes let's hope todd, todd mccomas any plugs for us brother yeah, sure. It's at Todd McComas and all my social media and all my podcasts, all this stuff's on toddcomedy.com. Everything me is on toddcomedy.com. Hey, it was great to see all you guys again, man. I miss you guys dearly. This was really, really special. I, I want to thank you. You Absolutely. too, buddy. Great to hang. Yeah. Great to see you, Todd. And please, everybody, go check out that Tiger King documentary. I know y'all are obsessed with Tiger King because it's in my mentions every three fucking minutes, even though I haven't seen it. And people seem to be angry at me, like I'm less of a person because I haven't seen it. <laughs> Money where your mouth is. If you're obsessed with it, go watch more about it on Todd's thing. There so, uh, And let me just said, say, Steve might mm -hmm. not have seen it, but the way you look now, you're a strong candidate to be a future husband of Joe Exotic. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know him. He wants my play button. So, <laughs> uh, Chris Bowers. At Bowers Comedy, BowersAlbum.com. Boom. Go. Awesome. Yes. Ben Glebe. Um, A couple of quick things. Um, one, I was just informed that my game show Idiot Test on, on Netflix was just the number three most watched show on Netflix a couple of weeks ago. I missed hey. it when it happened. So please watch it. So they will hopefully pick up more, more seasons. That would be awesome. And um, I also wanted to announce right now two things. A, a Nowhere Comedy Club show we just added is Brad Williams. The hilarious Brad Williams will be doing one on Ooh. April 24th and one on April 25th. The hilarious Greg Proops will be doing one on May 1st. And my personal announcement, I'm doing my own headline show on the Nowhere Comedy Club on Saturday, May 2nd. Please get tickets to all of it at NowhereComedyClub.com. And briefly, before I kick it back to, to Steve to uh, start it over, let me announce the hashtag game for Twitter for the next 24 hours. Actually, tomorrow's Thursday, so it's 48 hours. Hashtag Taco Bell a person. We want you to Taco Bellify a person. Could be things like Sierra Mr. Rogers or... Seven, <laughs> seven layer bill burrito, <laughs> or perhaps crunch wrap supreme leader Ayatollah Khomeini. Fun stuff like that. <laughs> so, hashtag your posts on Twitter with SDSC game and hashtag Taco Bell a person, and we'll announce our favorites on our next show. I'm gonna go with burrito exotic. 
Uh, yeah. That said, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that said, uh, yeah. Check out, uh, check out Ben's uh, upcoming show at Nowhere Comedy Club. Uh, he was right. His next stand-up show will be in that room. That's a hundred percent true. <laughs> uh, and right after this, uh, starting in just under an hour, uh, Josh Wolf is doing the show at Nowhere uh, Nowhere Comedy Club. We're so excited to have him. NowhereComedyClub.com. If you want a last minute ticket. Uh, reaction. <laughs> you know, Josh Wolf, he does not hold back. So I uh, can't wait to watch my self esteem plummet. Uh, you guys have been awesome as always. Thanks for supporting the show. And uh, we will see you uh, in 48 hours. Yes. Thank you.